<laughs> she wasn't easy to find. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Imagine. Why, you bitch. <laughs> That's your gal? Yeah, that's her. <laughs> Good. She's staying in a small tourist hotel in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Whale watching? Not quite. Looks like Dyer Owens isn't the only one she's run this investment scam on. Miss Portia Morrison is quite the smooth operator. Does she know we've been following her? Do you think I'm doing my job? Glenn's the best. <laughs> He's never let me down before. Look, I run a smooth operation, <laughs> but your friend here is very smart. My informant tells me that her living situation is temporary. We better get a move on. Now, when you get to the hotel lobby, introduce yourself as Nikita. The woman at the front desk will give you a copy of the key to the room. I'm going to start the car <laughs> and check the items in my willing captive kit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that at Pussies? Because I have the same one. <laughs> now, Bailey, you do not have a driver's license, and I'm not going to let you drive that car. Oh, come on. I'm just going to start it. Room, room. <laughs> Cute kid. Looks like uh, you've changed speed since last time I saw you. I'm done with assholes, Glenn. <laughs> They're too much trouble. Bailey has a good heart. <laughs> Think it's wise for her to be running around with a gal like you, then? Thanks for your help, Glenn. I owe you <laughs> You don't owe me nothing. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting something? It's supposed to open up the future. 
before it ever happens to her. It's a little gift from me to her. But could we just keep this between us? Now, Grace, you know that anything that you say to oh, me yeah, is... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Save that for your clients. <laughs> there are other rules for lovers. Well, true. Because if you were one of my clients, we couldn't do this. <laughs> I don't want to make you late for Jane. <laughs> Although I do think it's a little suspect <laughs> that she is seeing her therapist an hour before the wedding. It's not a session, Grace. I told you. Okay, well, you don't let me make you late. <laughs> oh, what'd you forget? This is not forgettable. Amy! Amy, baby! Hot damn! Where the hell have you been? Oh, Gracie, you know, all over, all over. Oh, right, I remember you told me that postcard from. Uh, yeah, yeah, that uh, border town, Douglas, Arizona. Yes, you were volunteering with that human rights group, <laughs> giving out water and food to the migrants crossing the desert. Oh, how I envy that. You know, I remember <laughs> when I used to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Grace, thing. Uh, let me ask you something. Who was that lady you were just sucking face with, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's Wendy. Ah. She's my new beau. <laughs> She's a fine, fine. Good to hear it. <laughs> oh, you are a sight for sore eyes. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, I heard a little rumor you were having a big bash out of your farm. Yeah. Yeah? Well, that bash is also referred to as a wedding reception for my daughter, Steffi. Yeah, I heard about that too. I guess you can't really stop her, right? Uh, oh, what? You don't like Jane? No, no, no. I love Jane. It's just I don't like, uh, okay, well, hey. Let's not talk about what I don't like, but let's talk about what I do like. <laughs> Jesus, Mom! Steph, you're back. I'm so glad to see you. I want you to meet uh, Amy. Amy? No. Who are you? Well, she usually goes by Dad. <laughs> Dad, what are you doing with my mom? <laughs> Dad and I are old friends, Steph. <coughs> oh. oh, right, right. Yeah, I'm all too familiar with your old friends. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that when I was about five and uh, <laughs> you and me and mom all still lived together, you had an old friend named Berta who came and actually parked her semi across my sandbox in the backyard and you stayed in her truck cabin with her for three whole days. And then when I was Six years old, <laughs> there there was Sal who had huge tits and, and a mustache and a beard, all of which you couldn't keep your hands off of. And, and, and then when I was seven, there was Janice and Janet who came together for a visit, and I'm pretty sure they came together too, if my seven-year-old ears were accurate. And, and, and then there was Darlene. You stayed in the guest bedroom with her for two weeks. She she squealed like a bird at all hours of the night. <laughs> Okay, okay, Steph. So it's true. I, I did have a lot of old friends. You know, cut the euphemisms. Because you would unabashedly fuck anyone who came into our property line. <laughs> Grace, well, what are you upset <laughs> about? Why are you upset? I'm an adult. I was an adult back then. And sex is a good thing. You know, it's you a beautiful way. You live with mom. mom. You were supposed to love mom, Vaughn. Uh, you were supposed to be my mom. She and I had an arrangement. It was something between her and me. <laughs> no, no. I was between your, her and you. I was supposed to be, I was the kid. I was your kid. Well, <laughs> you are our kid, and we both love you to pieces. You know Mom was miserable. She was miserable. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, Steph. It got too hard for Ellen. But 
we couldn't predict that. We agreed on an open relationship before we decided to have a kid. That's fucked up! <laughs> I don't agree. It just didn't work out. We tried and it didn't work. Well, I'm not making the same stupid fucking mistake that you made. I'm getting married and I am going to treat the person that I love like I actually love her. Your mother and I loved each other. Not enough. But I can love enough. I can love enough. Yes, you can. And yes, you will. And I am so happy. I think it's wonderful that you and Jane are getting married. Oh, this just afternoon. forget it! You never understand me! Oh, baby! You never understand me! Baby, I love you! Leave me alone! So, Get out of here! Okay? So proud of you. You are going to make a wonderful partner. And you are going to look Fabulous. <laughs> it's all right, buddy. It's all right. Ah, shit! Now I'm all pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in Canada. How the hell did you know? <laughs> She's gone! Gone? Dead. Did she leave a note? No. Okay, just please don't stop. Leave it all! Jesus, Dyer, Bailey, come back. She always comes back. Just stop it! What is going on? I lost room for cream! What? That's why Bailey left. <coughs> I lost room for cream. All that money I gave Portia is gone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> First she tries to bend this shit on me. Then I land up in jail. And then I lose my career as mayor. And then <laughs> she fucking gets away with it. I can't stand her. <laughs> Look. What is this? A notice of sale. It's going into foreclosure? They've already even got a bid on it. That organic, gluten-free wedding cake fucking bakery up the street. <laughs> We're looking to expand. <laughs> this is so terrible. This is so awful. But wait. We're still here, aren't we? Dyer, it's not gone yet. You know what? This is bullshit. This is bullshit. You know, you've been through a lot worse before, Dyer. Remember when you, you, you got arrested up at the bearded goat that time and there was no one to bail you out? Or that time that I put a spell on you and you accidentally fell in love with Julie Jaspers and then Grace had to intervene with her sage and wicked craft to save you? <laughs> <laughs> or what about that time when Ellie left and we thought that Cream would never open her doors again? <laughs> you have been through a lot, Dyer. We have been through a lot, but you have to keep on going. You're not alone in this. I'm here. Your friends are here. Sappho is still here. Okay, I just can't keep getting bailed out. I'm like Greece, for Christ's sake. You know? <laughs> Ellie left me this coffee shop and I flushed it down the toilet. So you have to keep going with what you believe in. What I fucking believe in? I don't even know what I believe in anymore. I'm 36 years old. I can't keep starting over, Lace. Well, you can't just stop. It's good. It's good. No. No. <laughs> no. Look at it with no soul or remorse. <laughs> 
than $25,000. No shit. Okay, we have to get in the car. Now! Fine, but I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> There are many ways to love stuff. Your parents chose a way that didn't work for both of them, but they made peace with each other and themselves. Maybe you could try that. You know, they've made some peace, but I swear that they still feel lost, you know, that they still long for each other. And that's just what seems so sad. I would hate to, you know, spend my life missing someone who's right there and who could love me and who, who I could love. And you won't, because you're choosing the person that you don't want to miss, but you want to love. I mean, you're making different choices altogether, okay? You're making choices that are right for you. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I mean, do you miss your ex? Were you married? Yeah, I miss her sometimes. But we were never married, no. Why not? My mother was a part of the women's movement. <laughs> One day, she and her best friend looked at each other, removed their wedding rings, and laughed. <laughs> I always felt blessed by my mother's rejection of marriage, the fact that she left my father when I was a baby, and that she wanted us, her daughters, <coughs> to be free. So no, marriage was never something that I thought of as something to dream of, it was something to shake off. But I don't think about it. I don't want it. So why did you agree to be my best man then? Aren't you happy for me? Yes, I am. <laughs> I have many friends, both gay and straight, who are into the marriage thing. And it brings them pleasure and joy. And I think one of the most important things about being queer is not judging other people's <laughs> desires. Hey, if that's something they really want to do, they truly want, I think it's important to accept that. Doesn't mean I can't be critical of all the conditions, you know, the patriarchy, the commercial media, the, you know, money things. <laughs> but, it's just really not for me, but it's important for me to support that. But you know what? Again, I think you should try to make peace with yourself about that. And even though I may be critical of some of those conditions, it doesn't mean that I'm critical of the individuals and their desires as different. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so hey, I need to go pick up my date. I need to stop here. You have a date? Yes, I do. And it's a first date. <laughs> it's a funny first date. How do we look? <laughs> you look handsome. Dapper. All right. Thank you. Because here she is now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Megan. Hello, Anne. You look stunning. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Hi, Steph. <laughs> Mother Superior? Uh, I'm just Megan now. <laughs> you used to date Jane? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I should turn you in. 
I should turn us both in. What? What good would that do? Portia Morrison was a sociopath. She had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes on the <laughs> We are covered in blood with tens of thousands of dollars in a stuffed teddy bear. The police are going to be trailing us any second. I don't think this is the time for a driver's ed lesson. Baby, watch out! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew you. I'm, I'm sorry I let you down. Me too. Because I love you. What? I said, I love you. And you're choosing to tell me that now? <laughs> you think this is romantic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be romantic. I'm trying to be honest. That's that. They found us. It's a sign. It's a sign, Julie. Are you kids all right? Holy shit, there's a lot of blood here. What the hell happened? We crashed our car into that tree. <laughs> huh. <laughs> you want something? No, officer, of course not. Something's funny. Something's funny. I'm going to need to see some ID. I I want to know who owns this car. I, I have something to say. No, Bailey. I have no. a confession no. to make. You can talk to me, son. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a hemophiliac. <laughs> what? I know it's not something you'd normally be embarrassed about, but I get bloody noses like this all the time. They've always made me feel different. I've always been the weak one, the one slowing everybody down. And now I've gotten us into this accident, and I've ruined our outfits. We're going to be late for the wedding, Julie. I'm sorry, I fucked up. <laughs> Our dearest friends, <laughs> Steph and Jane, and we bought them the sweetest present. Oh my God, Julie, why don't you show the officer the t teddy bear we bought Steph and Jane today on our day trip in Maine? I don't think the officer has time for that, Bailey. Actually, I collect stuff down here. That would really be interesting in seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't, why don't you let her hold it, hon? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's looking a little threadbare today. I don't know. Nonsense. It's the thought that counts. <laughs> wow, that's heavy. <laughs> I wonder what make and year this is. Oh, it's, you know, it's probably we just nothing special. It's, it's kind, kind of a sentiment more than anything else. You know. You know what I think? I think you guys are a really special couple. And I would be honored to drive you to that wedding. We wouldn't want to pose. I insist. And we wouldn't want to argue with the law. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have this Indigo Girls tape and I've been dying for a sing-along all day. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's
back so much from his blood. <laughs> Some of my girls have moved on to the alternative cut in Norway. I guess they're rather vampire friendly there. Milk's already in Maine. That's why he's missing the wedding. Mm -hmm. I miss him. I bet. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and we're here in this room saying, you don't hurt. <laughs> don't let anyone stop you. Dream a life of love and desire and wholeness and togetherness, because that's what you deserve. It's what we all deserve. But you have found it and are committing to holding it and growing it. And all of us here in this room today are here because we support your love for each other. Isn't that right, everybody? What's next? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Jane and Steph have prepared some vows. <clears throat> <laughs> wow. Jane. Wow. <laughs> Here we are. Isn't this great? <laughs> Jane, you are just so unreliably terrific. I don't know if you all remember, but uh, the first day I met Jane, I was working in Sappho as an undercover FBI agent. I was uh, in town, busting a coven of vampires that had killed your most beloved police officer, Jill Andrews. <laughs> and just as I was about to make the arrest, Jane comes bursting into cream with an herb and beats the brains out of the mother vampire. <laughs> well, you must remember because you're her. Uh, immortality has its boons. Thanks for coming to the wedding. <clears throat> Uh, I don't want to get too off point here. Um, <laughs> right, so back when I knew that this woman standing before me was daring and courageous and spectacular. Oh, but Jane, you were not easy to get to know. I'd get these little windows of opportunity and then I'd screw them up. Like the time I arrested Benny over here and the whole town got so mad and you wouldn't have anything to do with me. And, but. We found our way to each other, and I believe that we were always supposed to find our way to each other, and that it was never supposed to be easy, and that it will always take work, and, and love, and commitment, and understanding, and forgiveness. And Jane, you have so much of that. And in these last nine months, I have come to realize that not only are you fierce, but you are just one of the most loving and kindest and gentlest of souls, and I, and I love Jay. I, I love you, and I love this adventure that you've invited me into, this shared life. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Steph. I love every inch of you, and I too was smitten with you at first sight. I smited, and then I smitted. <laughs> Steph, back then when we first met, my heart was all bound up with fear and anger and grief, and that's why I was so fierce, because I needed it for survival. But you changed me. You changed me with your huge, brave way of being with people. Not just with me, but with everybody. I'm sorry that I blocked your love for so long. I'm sorry for you, but mostly for me. Because all I ever wanted was to crawl up close to the immenseness of you, and to be overwhelmed by your strength and your vulnerability. And now here I am, and I'm overwhelmed. And it feels so, so, so wonderful. Thank you. And I love, love, love you. <laughs> and I really do want to be your wife. Steph, will you be my wife? Oh. You know, Lindsay, I have heard that. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't even know why you're here. Is that weird letter you sent me? <laughs> Jane, I can explain. No, you explained plenty in your letter, Lacey. You know what? I can't take this anymore. I can't take it. Everything's going to shit. Sappho's going to shit. Cream is gone. Bailey's gone. And you two can't stop bickering all the time. I know it together. Excuse me. I'm in charge. <laughs> uh, and we were just about ready to get to the good part. Now, Jane, you asked Steph to be your wife. No, Steph, actually, what? actually, I want Lacey to explain. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's my statement on marriage rights. I have a policy of sending it out with every RSVP to a wedding I attend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sent this weird letter against marriage with the RSVP, and then you mark the yes box. <laughs> 
See, the couple is the smallest social unit which cares for the family according to certain value systems and rules agreed upon. That's why when one gets married, one does it under the witness of the state, right? It's to formalize one's relationship in relation to those larger structures and value systems. So it's not just this personal commitment between two people. No, 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 it's a social contract with the community. The couple becomes organized, or may I say, pacified. I also think that, that singles are a threat to the social order of the community. You see, they're a threat of desire. <laughs> desire is unproductive, right? It's inefficient, especially in a capitalist mind frame. Desire is very distracting. <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also think that same-sex marriage is is perceived as a threat to the social order, right? Because our values are complex. Um, our, our power relations aren't structured through patriarchy. We're confusing, right? So therefore, we're perceived as this uncontrollable threat to the social order. So I say, do it! Get married! That's why I'm here. And to make out with single guests. <laughs> I'm all for making out, you know? And I have to say, at the end of the day, marriage is just very, very square. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, no offense to anybody that wants to do that and enjoy it, but, you know, it, it just, for me, it's not at all queer. I mean, I came up in an 80s, 90s queer sensibility where queer people made our relationships with who we chose differently, right? So we would make community and relationship with like-minded fellow travelers to make a radical feminist alternative model, okay? I never ever dreamed that queers would willfully choose homo-normative lifestyles. I mean, you know, for me, it's always been a communal, collective, anti-hierarchy, anti-patriarchy. I don't know, I guess, I'm just always going to be a freak, right? But, soltera con aventuras, right? With girlfriends, sweethearts in every port, making family in the community with other like-minded radicals. <laughs> <laughs> long-term relationship. <laughs> and I am becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of the sacredness of commitment while still holding on to my friendships and myself in a kind of rare way for a conventional world or, or whatever. But I am now understanding how it's possible to really understand and cherish a relationship. You know, the other night I was just going to get ready to go to sleep, and I was thinking about wearing a love band. It's kind of like a wedding ring. And uh, I had recently asked Wendy, I decided I wanted one. And then I thought, wait, I want a love band with dyer. <laughs> And I want one, too, with you, Tim. Oh, Grace, that's just about the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me in my entire life. I'd love to give you a ring. Jane. Mm -hmm. Yes, Steph. I would really, really oh. like to. <laughs> oh. 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 Okay, excuse me, everybody. <laughs> no need to worry, my water broke, and I think that oh. maybe. Oh. Okay, stand back. Whoa! Cool it down. Oh. I've been doing this for 800 years. I love oh. oh. Okay, but just take your pants off. Take your pants off. <laughs> oh, my dear God, very dilated. How did that happen? When I started having a chat just before the wedding, but Steph said it was going to be a short ceremony. <laughs> I want. Take me. Take me back. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
I love you too. Ha, 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 ha.